Good morning, New Hope. Good to see you. Uh, I guess I can't see you, but you can see me. Whether it's morning, afternoon, evening, you're viewing this. I want you to know we love you. Pastors love you. I appreciate our pastors so much. They have such great hearts. They love you. They care about you. We're available. You can call us. Uh, my cell number is, uh, we're all published, uh, and uh, I'll just tell you mine. It's 778-4524. You can call me, and uh, the other ones are all published on our website, and I'm sure most of you have them. We give them out freely. So we're here for you. We want to serve you in any way we can. I'm so proud of our pastors. They've done a great, great job, haven't they? Amazing. You can even comment. Thank you, pastors, because every one of them, every one of them are just absolutely outstanding. Also, uh, I want to say thank you to my deacons and my elders. Had several deacons come around and help us out during these last couple, three weeks, and uh, an elder, and, and they've been praying for us, and I just appreciate our leadership and our church. I wanted to also tell you that uh, Susan and I were in Springfield March 10 that evening through March 12, the evening of March 12, and we were exposed to the virus, COVID-19, during that time. Several of our executive World Missions Board committees, Committee of the Assemblies of God, did have the virus. They were exposed by some French pastors visiting their Assemblies of God, visiting the U.S., and took a tour of the headquarters. Pray for them. They're struggling, and some of you have seen those posts. But uh, I think we're going to make progress. I'm praying not one of them loses their life. I'm praying health and life in the name of Jesus for every one of them. Also, I, I wanted to say uh, that uh, uh, this has been difficult in some ways. We're stuck in this house. My wife and I have been quarantined for 17 days. We went a little extra time. I did end up getting tested, uh, and it ended up being something totally different, but I, it came back negative. I don't have COVID. My wife doesn't have COVID. We're healthy now. We're doing very well. We're thankful. But my wife turned to me yesterday and she said, James, she said, you can't retire anytime soon, at least 75, maybe older. I can't have you around this house like this uh, after during that time. So I guess, uh, you know, I'm, you're stuck with me for a while. And I just want to say, though, it's a joy to serve you and, and be a part of, of a great team and uh, to be a part of a great church. Also, I wanted to tell you that... Um, um, uh, we're a family. You know, you're born into a family. I'm born into a family. And we're born into a spiritual family, the family of God. And in your family, you know there are people that are members of your family born there that don't participate. They're not a part. They're not carrying their load, as it were. They are absent from family gatherings. They don't take up their part of responsibility. And so just like you have to choose to be a part of your family that you're born into, you have to choose to be a part of the church family that you're born by the Spirit, the rebirth in Jesus' name. So church, we need to engage. Now I'm looking at this as a coach's speech, right? I'm going to fire you up to say, be the church. Never a better opportunity to be the church than right now. We need to be the church, but we need to participate being the church. So how do we do that? Well, first, I just want to share a scripture with you, if you don't mind. And that's uh, in uh, Matthew 6, starting in verse number 25. And I want you to have this thought that we don't need to worry. We have God. We don't need to worry. We have our church family. We have our families. We have our church family. And that means each other. It's not an institution. It's not a building. We're still the church operating. So uh, we can connect through many, many ways. Online, we can connect by calling each other. And just think of the Spanish flu back in 1918. They didn't have that opportunity to connect. They didn't have phones. They didn't have a way to do that. It was all face-to-face. -face. So I'm thankful for technology where we can continue to do some ministry and those that serve us in our te technological field at the church. Uh, so don't worry. Therefore, I tell you, Jesus said, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more than food? and the body more than clothes. Look at the birds in the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, and yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? Can any of you, by worrying, add one single hour to your life? Good question. And why do you worry about clothes? See how the flowers of the field grow, and they don't labor or spin. I'll tell you, not, not even Solomon in all of his splendor was dressed like one of these. If that is how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and tomorrow is thrown into the fire, will he not much more clothe you? Oh, you a little faith. So don't worry, saying what shall we eat or what shall we drink or what shall we wear? For the pagans, 
run after all those things. And your heavenly father, he knows that you are in need of them. But church, this is our response to COVID-19. Seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things will be given to you as well. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow. For tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. Don't worry. We have God. Don't worry. We have our families. And don't worry. We have our church family. We're going to work together. We're going to stand together. And we're going to support each other. And we're going to, we're going to minister to each other and share with each other. That's what the church does. So what does it look like in practical steps? Thinking that we're going to get through this together. We are. But first, if you need help, if you have a good family, call your family first. And if you don't, call your church family. Call your church. We're here. We want to help you. Just don't be afraid to ask for whatever it is we can do for you. And uh, so we're going to be there for each other and help. But we all have to participate. We all have to be a part. Everyone has to pitch in to help each other. What does it look like in practical steps? Well, the first thing is, if those of you that are blessed with an income still, be... Be faithful to give your tithe. Pay God's tithe. Bring the first fruits to God so the church remains financially strong. And our missionaries are caught in other lands. They're there. They need our mission support like never before. Some of our people have lost their jobs that are generous in giving to missions. So some of you that aren't giving to missions, you need to give the missions regularly and help us be able to support our missionary family. And the third thing is if you've really been blessed, you have a little extra. Give to the Benevolence Fund so we, as a church, we know what we're giving, when we're giving, how we can give and we can wisely and by the spirit led be able to dispense to help our church family and even those beyond our church walls that are in need as much as we possibly can so we want to reach to our community we want to minister to each other but most of all don't shrink back and be fearful be givers the next thing I want you to think about is we got this is time to pray this is time to read God's word to be strong in spirit right and to prepare ourselves this the Lord could come, prepare ourselves. And then secondly, another thing is evangelize. You know, you can share postings of our services and devotions. Host watch parties on your Facebook page, not the church page. It doesn't do any good to host a party on our page. We're already putting it there. Put it on your page and invite your friends to look at it. Host a party on your own page. And then, you know, Easter is going to be really special, isn't it? It's going to be a very special time. But also, before that, Good Friday's coming. Guess what we're going to do? We're going to drive through under our big canopy. We're going to have a no-excuse Friday night where you drive through, and we're going to lay our hands on the outside of your cars with your windows up, and we're going to pray, bless your family, and pray God's protection, and pray God's healing. And for his sickness, we're going to anoint that car. We're going to pray over you, and then you're going to move. It's not going to be long for each car. We're talking 30 minutes of power-packed prayer. 30 seconds, I mean, not 30 minutes, 30 seconds of power prayer, prayer thereabouts, maybe a little more, maybe a little less. And then our children's pastors with their gloves and with sanitation, they put together packets for your children. So those of you that have children, we're going to put those on your windshield. You're going to drive away from everybody else, get out of the car, grab them, put them in the car. And if we can get the packets of communion that we've ordered several weeks ago, if they come in, we're going to give you those packets. Otherwise, we're going to pray over that and you go home as a family and you have communion together because we want to be the church. And if you would drive through and make that a Good Friday offering, bring in your tithes and bring in your offerings, Offerings, you can put a little crack in your window and drop your offering right out on the ground. We'll collect it, turn it in. It's going to be a glorious day. You're going to see people through car windows be able to wave at each other and honk at each other, and the pastors will be there. You'll be able to see us. It's going to be a great time. I hope you'll you'll participate in that way to build yourself up. And then on Easter, we have planned the most special service ever, ever. I mean, it is a combination. We're put, we're recording in different locations. We're recording different music. We have creative things happening and it's going to be a power pack message and we're, we're going to post it. We're going to put it out there on, on uh, YouTube every hour, starting at 8 a.m., every hour of the day uh, through a certain number of hours and then a couple times in the evening as well. And so you can invite people. You can comment on there. It's going to be a great opportunity Easter. You'll be hearing more about that. In the meantime, pray. In the meantime, share. In the meantime, be encouraged. God's got your back. Don't be afraid, church. 
We will win. We will win. We have Jesus and his spirit that raised Christ from the dead living in us. So don't be afraid. Let me pray for you. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus that every person needing healing in this watching this video would be healed. For we are the healed in Christ Jesus. We Nothing can take it away. And salvation is ours. And I want to pray, God, that you bless every person with a protection around their families. Pour the blood over their doorposts, God. And may they prepare their hearts and be pure. And Lord, examine their hearts so that they can stand before you, God, without fear of dying. They know they're going to be entered into heaven and no fear there. And forever the family of God will be together. Bless your church, Jesus. Bless them, God, we pray. Amen. Talk to you later.